Hello, guys. Reporting live from my bedroom, it's Jordan and Colt 9. We are here to give you an update from Cleveland Clinic Pathology. It turns out but we're not I have stage 1 endometrial carcinoma cancer. I know this is going to be, like, really depressing because it's never a good thing for anybody to have cancer. Like, in my opinion, cancer is <clears throat> terrible, tragic, disgusting atrocious things right but i want to spoiler alert spoiler alert this individual jordan is cancer free as of the making of this video whenever you see this cancer free hallelujah hallelujah can you believe it and why do you think this particular individual is cancer free weight loss we do a lot of stuff here okay like on this channel it's a lot of people that say very disgusting bad terrible disgusting things all the time all the time, dude. I hear them say things like that, right? And I think every once in a while, it's a good idea to hear a good side of somebody's story, okay? So this individual, Jordan, uh, Jordan, Jordan, I think, had uh, egg sac cancer. I don't have an egg sac personally because I'm not a woman. But Jordan had egg sac cancer. And the doctor basically told her that she needed to lose weight in order to get rid of those symptoms. So we're going to go on a little journey. This is a raw reaction. I just like, compiled a whole bunch of videos that I thought maybe was like a good idea to get her baseline from when she started to where she is now. Okay? So I want to real quick thank you and everybody watching this because you're an amazing, beautiful person and Jordan for taking the initiative to lose weight and bettering herself to making sure that she's healthy and responsible for herself and everybody else around here because it is a very, very daunting task to have that news be put upon you and do something very drastic that maybe could conflict with your beliefs in a very fundamental way that you've maybe never had to deal with ever in your entire life and then actually do it, execute, and then see results. That is so beautiful. So we're going to watch all of this together. We're not Cleveland Clinic. We are. I also really love Jordan. I know I'm interrupting. Jordan, this, this particular individual, one of my favorite people I've ever reacted to, bro. She is so funny. She is so personable. And I really enjoy that about people when they're really personable and you can see them fully on display for who they are. I love that about people. So I'm so happy that she has made it up the other side. We're not in Cleveland. We are. Not. Are. Oh. Yes. So the main cause of endometrial cancer is the over estrogen action of estrogen. So the main cause of endometrial cancer is the overproduction of estrogen. And when you're fat, you make more estrogen naturally. So ergo, I'm fat making more estrogen, meaning causing my cancer. Obesity causing cancer, dude. It's real tragic when I hear this because this is more of like a direct cause and effect type of thing. Whereas oftentimes I hear people in the fat acceptance community, fat liberation community saying things like causation doesn't equal, you know, the reason why something like that is happening. And they do have some points there, but most of the time it's like bullshit points where they bring out these extreme scenarios where maybe somebody else could be affected by the same disease. And that's no reason why a fat person also has that same disease because guess what? You're thin and you also had that disease. Therefore, you can't contribute being fat to having this disease, which is always bullshit, by the way. If you have to go to these like very, very niche circumstances and go, this is the reason why. Like, I'll give you an example, right? Most people, if you were to say this, most people would agree. You go, women, most women wear makeup and men don't wear makeup. Now, you could easily go, David, that's incorrect. There's a lot of guys that wear makeup. I know. I know that a lot of guys wear makeup, but the statement is not incorrect, okay? On the whole, uh, generally speaking, men don't wear makeup, okay? Now, I don't know why men don't wear makeup. It's just not culturally norm for men to wear makeup. Usually, men don't wear makeup and women do wear makeup. So therefore, that's the statement. Now, if I told you being fat equals more diseases and illnesses and lower quality of life and you go, well, David, what about the thin people? Like the, the, the what about isms are always my favorite, but what about the thin people that also have these diseases and illnesses and things such and so forth? What about them? What the fuck does that have to do with anything? I don't know why you would even bring up a scenario where thinner people are having the same illnesses as you. I know they do, okay? It's about the general speaking, okay? Most of the time we're talking about, generally speaking, fatter people are gonna have a harder time dealing with these things and probably gonna contract more of these illnesses compared to 
thinner people. So when you say this stuff, it's incredibly disingenuous and you're not doing anyone any favors by going, oh, but what about these people that also have these illnesses? I'm not discrediting those people, but those are the exceptions to the norm when we're talking about these big, large statement pieces. So I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to stress on that because this is a very direct cause and scenario, right? Being fat, which is true, by the way, when you're fat, your body does produce more testosterone because it's just what it leads to, right? And I know a lot of, I know a lot of big men, a lot of big, giant, big breasted men that produce a lot of, uh, you would think would produce a lot of testosterone. And I told them, I remember this one time I told this guy, I said, listen, you got to go get your testosterone check. Cause this guy was like easily 350, right? He got his, he got his testosterone check. This guy was six foot four. Okay. Marble of a man, but he just had a big ass gut. Okay. He went to get his testosterone check, dude. His shit was like 300, three. Now, if you don't know, that's way below average. I believe like for a normal man of his age, he should have been anywhere between like 500 and 800, maybe a thousand, but he wasn't. Okay. He was 300, which is free, the free testosterone numbers, which was crazy. Okay. You know why? Because he was so incredibly fat. He lost a lot of weight, got his shit tested again. He was up to like 500 last time I checked. So he did increase his testosterone. Now you might be thinking, David, men don't need testosterone or whatever the fuck. Shut the fuck up. That's crazy. Okay. Men do need testosterone. It makes you feel good. It makes you want to get your penis hard. Now this guy wasn't even beating off, which is one of the reasons why I told him to get his shit checked out. And you might be thinking, David, why are you having conversations with random men, not random men, my best friend about them beating off. Do you not ask your friends about when they beat off and what they're beating off to? Is this not conversations that come up in your day-to-day -day life? Because if it isn't, then I don't want to be your friend because I don't think there's anything wrong with having conversations with your friends and going, Hey man, man, I just fucking, I was just beating my shit like crap. I was beating my shit. Like I, it owed me money. I was just waxing my shit and it, it was crazy. I beat this shit up and I busted a hot, that shit flew across the room. I couldn't believe it. That's okay to do with your friends. It's not gay by the way to do that. He had told me that he had not done it in like three weeks. And then even before that, when he did bust, it was like two weeks before that. And then I was like, that's crazy. That is insane. But he was eating a lot of grease. He was eating a lot of disgusting, atrocious foods. And the reason for that is because his testosterone was very, very low. And I'm sure there's other reasons too. You know what I'm talking about, obviously. But the testosterone was a big major player in that. And the same thing could be said for this woman. Like you're, if you're a woman, you probably want a lot of estrogen. You probably want to feel that good estrogen. Women need testosterone too, obviously. But the point I'm making is like, when you're very obese, your body is like incredibly malnourished when it comes to the hormone production of a lot of this stuff, because it's like waking up on the wrong side of the bed every single fucking day. And it just becomes the new norm to you. And then before you know it, you don't even know what you're missing. You know what I'm talking about, dude? It's like being a closeted gay man for your whole entire life. And then one day when you're sitting on the train, a homeless guy walks by and just slides his cock across your lips like it's a, like it's a card reader at a supermarket. And you taste the sweet sensation of the BBC across your lips. And you go, that is, oh my God. Oh my God, that, that was good. That was so good. Now you understand what you've been missing. But you didn't know for so long that you had been missing that. And I think it's probably like that. Okay, this is probably one of my biggest non-scale victories yet, is one, I just realized, well, I've been thinking about it, but like, really just realized, my seatbelt, oh, I just pulled on it, okay, but my seatbelt no longer locks when I'm driving, and then two, and this is, this one to me is bigger, and I, I don't know, just probably just because I can notice it more, do you see this gap? between me and the steering wheel. FYI, she lost weight. Isn't that amazing, bro? So many times I've heard fat acceptance people say that it's not, oh, fat tax, I have to buy a seatbelt extender to b actually buckle myself in. My gut bumps into the steering wheel every once in a while and it's really uncomfortable for me to drive because seats aren't made for people of size and that cars need to change fundamentally because it is a negative thing that cars are supposed to fit mid-sized people and not mega people. So this is an absolute win dude i love it i love this is so this is motivation right here okay this person losing weight okay and guess what happened quality of life increases you no longer need to worry about pulling on the seatbelt and then not having any more pull to it which is crazy by the way because seatbelts have a lot of pull to them but you can no longer you no longer have that issue you can pull and buckle and you're good you don't need to worry about that this is a fucking win look at the motivation look at the gap delicious absolutely delicioso This seat, I always sit with the seat all the way back, so it's not like that changed. Like Snoop Dogg. Why am I just now noticing that my stomach is not sitting on the steering wheel? 
Isn't it great, dude? It's just, it's such a beautiful thing to see people that when they start losing weight and they start seeing, wait a minute now, I've been complaining about this stuff for so long and I just endured it because I just kind of assumed that that's just how life was for me. Like I just had to have no slack or maybe I needed a seatbelt extender or maybe I needed two seats on a plane or maybe I need this or that, that. The point I'm making there is that no, that is not what you, that's not how your life should have been. You could lose weight like Jordan, okay, here, and you would be able to have the slack you need. You would have the, the gut no longer touching the steering wheel. You don't need to buy the extra plane seat. You don't need to physically lift up your leg and go into the shower because you can't do it yourself anymore. You don't need to have these problems. You can alleviate these things yourself. And all it takes is a little bit, a little bit of consistency and the will to do it and understanding that not only is it going to benefit you, but in the process of benefiting you, it's going to benefit everybody else around you. Because how many people do you have in your life that that literally work off of you. How many people rely on you? And everybody knows, everybody knows it's not a good thing when, you, some, when you're when you relying on somebody and they have major health issues or they have something that they can change but they're just not changing. That is not a good thing, right? But if you're somebody that's taking your life in your own hands and you're able to make the changes that really are necessary to keep you in a good healthy state, that's beautiful. That's so beautiful. So again, good job on Jordan's part. I'm not driving with my belly anymore. Beautiful. That's crazy. Do you, I don't know how many more angles I can show you. It's not sitting on the steering wheel. Beautiful. That's so fucking cool. That is, <laughs> those little victories mean more to you than what the scale says. Now, don't get me wrong. I love when that number goes down. It makes yeah. you feel real fucking good. Just rub it in their face. Rub it in all the fat except its faces. Guess what? The number going down is a good feeling because you're seeing the number go down. You're realizing you're becoming healthier and you're becoming more and more acrobatic and you're able to move yourself in the ways that you should have been able to move yourself for all of your life. And now you're finally starting to realize that and it is beneficial and it is good for you and it does make you feel better. It is a good thing. Don't let these people fucking shit on you for losing weight. But these are the things that keep you fucking going when shit's hard or when you're not seeing the scale. And you're becoming more attractive and you're looking delicious. I mean, you already, the person watching, I'm talking about you, you already look really good. I mean, let's just stop for a second and acknowledge it. You look really good all the time, regardless of what we're talking about. But you can always improve your physical appearance more and more and more and more. And you're going to become more and more desirable as you lose weight. As you're seeing here, looking delicious every day. Fucking move. These are the things. These are the things. That make you feel good. Yeah. I don't know. Life's not about weight, but I need to lose it. I love you. Period. Losing weight when you've been fat your whole life is fucking weird. You want to know why? Because no one prepares you for the fact that when you start seeing the changes in your body, like actually seeing them, not the compliments from other people, but you start to see it in yourself. No one prepares you for how fucking mad you are at yourself for not doing it sooner. Oh. Look at this. I just took this picture like 15 minutes ago in the bathroom and this is the first time since 2017 that you have been able to see these these little scars up here on my stomach from where they went in and you know pushed the tubing down from my brain shunt the first time and I don't know anything about that, but this is a beautiful thing, dude. Seeing changes in yourself and understanding that for so long, dude, it really is like you had not known what you were missing for so long, and then suddenly you do, right? I see it a lot in old people when they discovered really what the internet is. Growing up with the internet, I always had known the beautiful Pandora bo Pandora's box of, you know, the internet, dude. It's a give and take. But seeing old people, like people that are like literally in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, that pick up a phone for the first time, scroll through YouTube, scroll through Google, having that information directly on their phone, it's like eye-opening for them to go, holy shit, I've lived my entire life without any of this knowledge, and now suddenly I have it all. It's like, you know, it's like flipping, it's like flipping a switch. You can never go back after that. And I think it's such a beautiful thing seeing Jordan actually understand that now she's losing weight and she's feeling the benefits and seeing the benefits, dude. Oh, it makes me feel so good. I also want to commend her on this inlined. Look at this toilet paper rack, dude. It's in the wall. Wow. That's actually really cool. I don't, I have one that sticks out of the wall, 
but I also have another one because the way that the one that sticks out of the wall, you have to like pull up and over to get it out. And it's like sometimes really uncomfortable to like really chug at it. And I remember one time I actually pulled so hard, I actually ripped off the wall and I had to call up my, you know, the person that I, up, up my apartment dude. I'm like, hey, uh, the shit fell off the wall. And he's like, how did it fall off the wall? And I was like, ah, I walked in, and it was on the floor. And he was like, oh, okay, uh, all right. And then he came over, the the Mexican guys came over and they re reinstalled it again. I never took it off the wall again because now I'm scared of it. So I have another one that has like holes and you could put the toilet paper in it and you could just slide the roll right on it. And then once you're done with the roll, you could just toss it and then booyah, you got a new roll. But I'm happy that she has one that's in the wall, which is cool. That's devotion. This many years, you've been able to see those scars. And bitch, that feels fucking good. Hell yeah. But also, I'm like mad at myself, Loki, for being yeah. so for real. But yeah, because you wasted so much time, right? At least you're cutting your losses now. But I can see why she would be upset. Like, can you imagine spending years of your life dealing with the problems and traumas of being fat when, in all honesty, you could have just lost weight and had all those problems be alleviated? You would have looked better. You would have felt better. Your life would have increased as a result of all that. And you're just now realizing that you could have done that at any point before this. And now you just, now you're finally doing it. That's got to be like a major slap in the face, but it's okay. It's not a good way to look at it. It's okay to acknowledge that, but at least now you can come to the understanding. This is something you're doing now, right? You're changing your life. Now you're cutting your losses now. Yes. You could have done it before at any point in time, which always makes me extremely sad and angry. Sometimes when I see these fat acceptance, people talking so much shit about losing weight and how terrible it is to lose weight and how it's not beneficial. There's no reason why anybody should lose weight. And then I hear these people talk and I go, if you did lose weight, I feel like, I really feel like you would find the benefits. You would see how great it is, how beautiful it feels to finally lose weight. But they just convince themselves. They put themselves in this pocket dimension of absurdity for so long that they can no longer climb out of it. And if they, the, the, the thought process of somebody else trying to is so blasphemous to them that they condemn them and they shit down upon them as if they're like, you know, like, I don't even know, like plebeians or something like that. They look at them as lesser human beings now. And it's sad. It's so incredibly sad, dude, because we're literally seeing the results here of a person that decided to lose weight. Granted, it was for an extreme reason like cancer, but ultimately Regardless of how you're losing that weight, if you're doing it for the right or the wrong reasons, if you're seeing the results and you're finally you're finally realizing that it feels better to lose that weight, I can't look at this as anything other than beneficial and honestly. Let's focus on the positive. And I just thought I would remind you bitches it's almost my time. It's almost over for you bitches. Damn. Anyways, that's all I have for now. She's about to get hella menses. Things I hate as a fat person. Woo! Disclaimer. Could all these things be fixed if I wasn't fat? Absolutely. Period. You gotta make sure you emphasize that. Too many times I see the why I hate being why I hate being fat, and then they just list things that obviously could be changed with them being skinny or losing weight. So I love it, dude. I love it. Did that make this video as fun? No. Her eyebrows are nice too, right? I know that a lot of girls nowadays like to have like the whoosh, you know what I'm talking about? Like the swoosh down here where it goes down. But some women just have naturally like masculine eyebrows. Like my eyebrows are super masculine where they come like they're very horizontal. And I think it's like a masculine flavor, right? Isn't that a masculine flavor? Somebody told me that was. Number one, booths. Am I going to fit in the booth or is my belly going to have to go on the table like it's the meal? Damn. Bone up a belly, bitch. Damn. See, this is why I love her, dude. She's she's so cruel. She's like, she's so funny, dude. She's so funny. She's got so much personality, bro. I would love to hang out with this person, dude, because they're just so fun. I hate when you have to restrict yourself around people so much. What other person do you know is going to say, oh, I can't fit in this booth because otherwise I'm going to have to lift up my gut and throw it on the table like it's the meal. That's hilarious. That's hilarious, dude. And I bet that was something that she just thought about right there on the fly. That is awesome, dude. Because too many times I hear these depressing people go, I can't fit in the booth. I'm going to feel, it's going to feel, it's going to feel super, super, like I'm going to hurt myself. Dude, dude, come on. Stop it. Come on. Two, armrests. Specifically on office chairs. I look like a busted can of biscuits each and every single time. <laughs> Squeezing my side and shit, I think the fuck not. And those shitty little plastic ones that you set at a bonfire? No. Three. Seat belts. Now most seat belts do fit me. They're not a one size fit all. You get into like an old Toyota Corolla. Mm mm. That bitch ain't going past here. All right. Damn. Four plus size clothing. Who said I wanted the ankle of my pants to literally be the circumference of the earth? Damn. 
And who said I wanted a shitty little saying on it? Like, live, laugh, whine about it. Yeah, I will agree. A lot of those fucking, dude, people nowadays have some really cringy clothing options nowadays, dude. Yeah, I don't know why so many people are so devoted to having giant logos across their clothes, too. I don't want a big-ass t-shirt with the Avengers on it. Like, I do have a shirt like that. But the one that I'm wearing right now is just a regular... This is nothing. This has nothing on it. It's just a regular t-shirt. I don't care about brands. I don't know why so many people live and die by brands. It's not a big deal. Stop caring about brands so much, dude. Like, I get it. You want to wear Crocs, but... Dude, stop trying to, like, appeal to this, like, consumerism shit that we have nowadays. But it's okay to own products. Like, obviously, you see, I'm representing for the SERP gang. That's what we all are. You, If you're watching this right now, you're a part of the SERP gang. Could we just really quickly take a moment to say how beautiful Davina is today? Look how beautiful she is. Oh, my God. But not as beautiful as you. With some rhinestones and a cold shoulder. No. You remember when girls were bedazzling their vaginas? You remember that? You used to have, like, bedazzle kits. Where you can like order, they used to be like all over the, the TV show ads. Like call today and you will be able to get the bedazzler kit. And not only that, if you call in in the next 20 minutes, you'll be able to buy another one for free. And then you go, oh my god, right? And I remember I would, I remember one time I was watching a porn dude and it was this girl dude and she unleashed her vagina. like, But she did one of those crazy cool things like, where you take the side and you just pull it over and she showed off her vagina, right? And that thing was sparkling, dude. It was flavored up with layers of rhinestones all across the vagina. It was crazy, but she had a lot of lip, you know what I'm talking about? Where it was like one of those vaginas like this and then she moved it aside and you could see the like the actual vagina and she also did the interior of the vagina or maybe somebody else did it. I don't even know how you would even do that. Like how are you down there going like, yep, let me just make sure, hit the bedazzle right there, yep, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was different colors, the interior was more pink than the outside which was like the regular, you know, diamond, the diamond flavored and that's beautiful, man. I mean, I think that's obviously not a cool trend because if I'm about to have sex with you, I feel like that would probably feel really, really uncomfortable. Like the time I told a girl that I like hair on her vagina, but she interpreted that as, okay, I'm just not going to shave for like four days or five days. So that way the hair kind of comes back. But then when it comes back, it's like a cactus, right? I meant like the Hitler mustache. I meant like the, you know what I'm talking about? I meant one of those on the, the, the landing strip. That's what I meant. I didn't mean... You know what I'm talking about? I didn't mean like the hair, the prickly hair. And every time I remember I, was, I looked at it, I was like, oh, it's probably fine. And then I was like, oh, ah, 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 ah. That's what I was doing. But I kind of, I didn't make, I didn't actually do that. But in my mind, I did that because I was like, I'm a man. I'm not a bitch. I'm going to take this shit. It's not a big deal. But when I, when I unsheathed my, my penis and I looked down, I was like, is it okay? Like, am I, is this, you know, am I still in one piece? What happened down there? And luckily it was okay. But, um. Man, dude, I never. If you're gonna tell a girl to not shave her vagina, just to make sure. If you do say that, specify. Can you, you know, make sure that it's not prickly? Or if you're gonna not shave it, can it like just have the landing strip, or maybe just have like the the sideburns on the side or something like that? Because the 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 just having all the hair like that is is terrible, terrible, man. And to piggyback off of this, uh, shapewear. Lululemons. You have to have shape for shapewear. What's true? It? dude the most base take i've ever heard this woman ever say dude if you are somebody in your body is in the shape of four avocados that have been morphed together that is not that is not shape that is lumps that is just all over your body dude i don't even know why you would feel like you want to emphasize those areas dude it's just like i see so many times dude these a walk down the street Okay, not here where I live because I live around a lot of people that would probably like shoot you if you wore something like this. But if you go to like the really, really liberal part of where I live, which would be like downtown Boston, right? Beautiful, amazing, gorgeous place. Okay, tons of people. I love interacting with people, love talking to people. I don't care what you look like. But the amount of times I've seen men and women walking down the street in these particular places that are big as fuck, okay, Lululemon up. Their legs will be like skinny bones, and then the top part will be like massive. You're like two toothpicks on top of like an extra large potato. And I'm just looking at that like, what the fuck, man? Why are you wearing that? Out of everything you could possibly wear, and the Crocs too? Oh, oh, it's gross. But she's right on that, dude. You need shape to have shapewear. True. Piggyback off of this shapewear. You have to have shape for shapewear. What's it going to do? Make me more oval? True. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm 25, and being fat gave me cancer. 
and I just watched a video of a girl in here saying she showers twice a week. If I shower twice a week, this would be a swamp. I just, I, the amount of times I've heard people tell me that being fat doesn't increase the amount of time that you have to spend in the shower or washing yourself in appropriate time frame. And it just, it just makes me feel so good finally hearing somebody give that some validity, uh, especially a fat person, a person that is of that realm. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, it's like when you have a black guy friend, you know what I'm talking about? And they go, you're racist. And you go, how am I racist? Tyrone. How could I be racist when I got Tyrone as my friend? He's back to, yeah, dog, that's my friend right there. I don't care if he's white. He my, he my boy too, right? That's beautiful. Oh, oh, obviously it's a joke. I know some people will go, David, that's racist. Come on, dude, take a joke. This is such a beautiful thing to hear. Yes, it's so true, dude. The amount, of, I literally remember watching a video of a girl saying that she had some kind of like infestation, some kind of growth in her belly button because she could not wash it. Like she was able to wash all the crevices on her body. And even that really fat guy with the really hot wife on TikTok that went on Pierce Morgan, he literally says when he takes a shower, he feels like he's having a heart attack because he has to clean himself. And it's like agonizing the amount of effort he has to put in to like actually appropriately cleanse himself, puts him on the brink of death every single time so he doesn't take showers very often obviously so he smell, probably smells like old onions that have been deep fried in like potato grease or something like that but hearing somebody like this in this particular scenario validifying these claims it just makes me feel oh it's just really lubricant i'm oh i'm just so wet i'm just wet right now i just i'm wetter than an african child during typhoon season dude i'm just oh lubricated from head to toe Ooh. this would be a swamp and I would be Shrek. That just it goes to show you, when you're bigger, you have more to clean. I could probably go two weeks. If I went two weeks without cleaning myself, I don't think you would notice. I don't think you would notice, dude. I don't really have a particular type of smell, really, that comes off me. If I wasn't doing anything too aerobic that week or the week following that, you probably wouldn't even notice, dude. And DreamWorks would be making a movie about me. Okay, I will admit that the, the she has some, like, leaves behind her. Would be make Yeah, this is gay, okay? Uh, this is... Th don't do this. Why you have leaves on your fucking shower? I know they're not real leaves, and I know you probably bought them for, like, a dollar forty nine on Sheen, and it probably took them four months to get to you. But it's not cool. Get a movie about me. Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm 25, and I wasn't able to wipe my ass when I shit. I know you're thinking to yourself, why the fuck would you post that? Some things just aren't made for the internet. But the reality was, at almost 500 pounds, I couldn't fit right here to shit. I feel like there's a conversation that needs to be had about knowing that it's okay to love ourselves in every season of life, in every way that we look, and knowing when things like not being able to fit in your upstairs bathroom to wipe your ass isn't okay it's beautiful man it's it's so great dude it's so great i'm so happy hearing somebody else say these fucking words and especially somebody that's fatter dude can you imagine not being able to properly clean yourself or wipe your fucking ass when you're in the shower i know some old people have really hard times getting up off of the, the off of the 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 toilet or maybe they have a hard time washing themselves and things like that and that's okay because you're older, I mean, it's not okay in the sense of like, you know, you shouldn't feel bad about it in that sense. Like, it's okay. Like, you're older. It is what it is. You need accessibility devices. But when you're like in your 20s, she's 25. She's 25. 25 years old. I know when I first saw her, I thought she was like 40. But she's 25. And she is coming at you telling you that she had problems wiping herself, pooping, and things such and so forth. How many times have you heard fat acceptance people say that they can literally no longer poop in like public restrooms because they're not big enough to fit the the, the, the sheer girth of the butt cheeks that, now, that, that they now present? A lot, a lot. And I know many women, fat acceptance women, that say that they can't even use the bathroom on the planes because it's literally impossible for them to even go into the, 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 the stall in and of itself. It's impossible for them because they are so fat the idea of them going through that door is implausible. They cannot do it. And that's not good. The fact that you can no longer push yourself through a door to use the restroom should automatically go, this is a red flag, I need, should, I need to lose weight. But for some reason, they don't. They never think like that. That is a problem. That is a problem. If you are going to the bathroom and you, cannot long, you can no longer reach from underneath and wipe, wipe, right? You can't wipe anymore. 
because there's so much in the way and you would need like an extra four uh, four or five inches on your arm and an extra joint somewhere on the other side so you can get like doop 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 right to get up and underneath that's not good okay that should be a major red flag and i love that this person is now finally taking the proper measure measures to eventually to lose that weight and now she can wipe her ass which is a major dub i mean granted i've been wiping my ass for a long fucking time so you know maybe i should get a fucking high five too you know can i get a fucking high five wipe my ass for a long time but i'm happy that she's able to that's amazing that is a major move for her dude i, I it just makes me feel good it makes me feel good so what, what took me a long about? time to be able to admit these things to you know so many people but i feel like it's important pride is a pride can be a terrible terrible disgusting thing and sometimes not telling somebody something people do it so that way they don't have to confess something you know what i'm talking about and i know you know what i'm talking about there have been many times when i was in school and somebody had asked me david did you do your your homework no fuck no i didn't do my fucking homework but i lied or if i maybe i didn't lie but maybe i tried to change a subject to try to talk about something else because i didn't want to talk about the thing that really bothered me which was the fact that i was failing or i was really just like trying to get past the fact that even though i knew the homework i could do it i never really wanted to do it and that was the reason why i didn't do it right i didn't want to talk about it and this is probably the same thing here like when you know something is some when it, you know something is bad when you know something you can change but you just don't want to talk about it because if you do it becomes real you know what i'm talking about then it's it's a very human thing it's a very human thing and that's completely fine and I love that jordan has the ability to talk about shit. and this is what i really love about people that are so incredibly forthcoming about themselves it's great now it's okay to have personal information be held to you that's fine but like if you're a person that's really open you're willing to talk about stuff i really treasure that right you remember that one girl kelsey that made that response video on me and she said that i'm not willing to talk about personal information about myself dude that shit really rubbed me the wrong way not in that way not in that way because i know that i'm like if you were to talk to me dude and i know you know this i'm like so incredibly forthcoming about literally almost everything about my life and I'm like an open book when it comes to anything. And it super hurts me when people say things like that about me. And it's like, dude, what are you talking about? Like, obviously this is not true. You're saying something ridiculous. And that's one of the reasons why I love Jordan. She's so open. We can't scream body positivity and self love and let things like that happen. That's true. not loving yourself. That's not loving yourself. You're literally putting yourself in a, you're literally every single day confining yourself in the prison of your own body for no other reason than body positivity or fat acceptance because you put yourself in these brackets and if you reach outside the brackets you get demonized i wouldn't even be surprised that people in in these communities right are probably shitting on her because she chose to lose weight even though she literally needed to lose weight in order to get rid of the fucking cancer i know that there are people out there that are doing that shit and that just kind of goes to show you how unreasonable these people are there's no point of being in these particular communities because for no other reason than losing weight they will demonize you and that should never be something that you tolerate that is such a terrible 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 mindset to have these people are in a perpetual ouroboros a snake eating its own tail of eating themselves alive and they hate when anybody loses weight we have to prioritize mental health just as much as physical health true and not being able to come to my upstairs bathroom in the home that i bought to wipe my ass was crushing true dehumanizing even all of this to say things like that toilet are much more important than the numbers on the scale life's not about weight but i have to lose it and i just wanted to let you know i love you it is beautiful to see Jordan finally come into that thing. I really wish that I would see more people like Splotch Maker, dude, Splotch Maker, Jordan Underwood, Hannah. I would love to see these people watch these videos and then look at them with a critical eye. Not look at them in the sense of like, this person's fucking just, just, just absolutely disgusting for losing weight. I want them to look at it in the sense of like, Maybe this, po this, this person has a, a, a reason to lose weight and it's a valid reason and they're actually looking at the benefits of it instead of just seeing a terrible person behind the camera saying something like losing weight is good for you, you know? And even even this person, right? Even Jordan has to like super, super marsh marshmallow every one of their statements because she probably knows that if she says something a little bit too harsh, that might demonize certain people, right? Fuck them. Say that shit. With all your fucking heart, dude. It's good to lose weight. It is beneficial to lose weight. Rep that shit. Fuck those other people, bro. If you need to lose weight for your health, you should not feel like you have to, like, you know, uh, 
what, what's the word I'm, I'm looking for here? You shouldn't have to like jump around the fire or like uh, beat around the bush to try to get your point across without offending too many people. Fuck them. It's not their life. It's your life. And you need to be the one ultimately that's making the decisions that benefits you to be healthy, to live your life in a more fulfilling, meaningful way. And I commend her for doing that. And in case it wasn't crystal clear, I can wipe my ass there now. Woo! Bye. That's fucking big ups. Big ups to her. Hey, I'm Jordan. I'm 25. And I no longer have cancer. I have been able to successfully lose almost 70 pounds with the help of intermittent fasting in about three months. That is such a... When you have so much to lose, it becomes... I mean, she said she was literally approaching 500 pounds. So I wouldn't even be surprised that she did lose 70 pounds in three months, though, is insane. Like, that is a crazy number to lose. You know, really great for her. I'm, I'm, be I'm guessing that she's has a, uh, she's feeling amazing now. She's like, I mean, she's obviously alleviated the cancer, dude. Isn't that fucking awesome? Dude, what a fucking great story, bro. What an awesome thing. We lose almost 70 pounds with the help of intermittent fasting in about three months. And because of that, I saved my own life. July 6th, 2023, I was diagnosed with stage one endometrial adenocarcinoma or cancer of the uterus. This cancer is almost 100% reliant on the fact that I was fat, weighed almost 500 pounds, and produced too much estrogen. I hate watching people cry on the internet, but I just- Deserved, dude, deserved. What a fucking story, dude. Three months. And then you realize when you realize you have a problem and you actually do something about it, this should not, this should be rewarded. Though, okay, we need to all celebrate the beauty of this person and understanding. Now, granted, she did do it through the process of understanding that something was wrong, but it doesn't matter. Okay, the fact that she was able to do it nonetheless, getting from like what well, she was said she was like almost four hundred pounds, losing seventy pounds in three months is extraordinary progress. Anytime somebody loses any denomination of weight in a beneficial way. I think that should be congratulated, dude. So when I meet people that say, I lost 25 pounds, I lost 10 pounds, I lost 15 pounds, that's fucking amazing. Don't look at that as like some light number. You know, if you took a year to lose 70 pounds, don't look at that as like, oh, I failed because this person chose to lose that weight in three months. It's different scenarios. You're a different person. It's okay that you lost weight a little slower. As long as you lost that weight, you should be looking at it as nothing more than a absolute achievement, okay? So... I, 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 you know, it should nothing, nothing more than absolute beauty from this person, dude. I love it. It's, it's such a motivational story. And like I said, I want to talk more about these people that choose to lose weight. Um, anyway, let's finish the video. I hate watching people cry on the internet, but I just wanted to let you guys know that this is the hardest thing I've ever, ever done. And I'm so fucking proud of myself. Life's not about weight, but I need to lose it. And I just wanted to let you know, I love you. We love you too. Deserve, dude. Come on. Clap, dude. Clap. That's it. This is it, bro. Look at this. This is the fucking shit that every fat acceptance person should see. You get an illness because of obesity, okay, here, and then you lose weight and the illness alleviates. Granted, this won't be something that everybody can do. There might be some illnesses that you just can't get rid of anymore. And those things, it sucks. It does suck. But that shouldn't be a reason why you don't lose weight. So many times I hear these people say, I got an illness, okay? And most of the time, that illness could be attributed to obesity. But a lot of times I hear these people say, even though it might be or it might not be for that reason, they don't think of that as a, a way to alleviate it or even it's something that they cannot change. Therefore, it's not a reason to change. And it's such a terrible, disgusting, horrid way of thinking because there's even though it's not something you could change, even though this is a chronic illness that's going to stay with you for the rest of your life, that doesn't mean you can't change your body and benefit yourself in some type of way. When I hear people say I have joint problems and this and this and this and this, all the lipidema and all that stuff, and they go, well, I have it. It's not something I can ever change. I'm going to have to live with this for the rest of my life. That's true. You're right. But if you chose to lose the weight, do you not think that the weight is not going to, like the weight lifting off your body is not going to like uh, make you healthier? It's going to lighten the load on the joints. It's not going to alleviate some problems. It's going to make your life a whole lot better to lose at least some of that weight. But so many times I hear these people because they've locked themselves in the framework of never needing or never should want to ever lose weight because it's bad, it's demonized, they perpetually suffer whilst being on the internet telling you that you're a bad person for making changes. 
to me, it just seems terrible and disgusting and evil. But I know these people come from a good – I know they come from a good place. I know they think they're doing something right. And I can 100% fuck with that. Like, fine. It's great. I, I get it. And I just really wish they would reach out to other people that disagree with them so that way they can have conversations and maybe they could test their beliefs and see really if they are good beliefs. Because otherwise, if you're just in a vacuum chamber, a vacuum chamber and he, all you're hearing is other people saying the same shit to you, and whenever somebody says something, anything other than what you believe, you block them or you tell them that they're idiots or whatever the fuck, instead of maybe actually listening to them because maybe they do have some practical advice, no, you're never looking at it like that. That's terrible. But I really... I really love this this person, dude. One up for this person. We'll finish the video. I think Life's that's the end of it. Life's not about though. weight, but I need to lose it. And I just wanted to let you know, I love you. Cheers to being cancer free. Beautiful, man. Beautiful, beautiful. Cheers. 100% cheers. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. It's a shorter one compared to ones we usually do here, but I thought this would be like a really good change of pace to celebrate the beauty and the amazingness of somebody that actually took their life in their own hands and decided to make changes and didn't look at it as something like society that had to change for them or they couldn't do something to help themselves, even though all that stuff is on the table, even in very chronic situations where you think you can't do something, there's always something you can do. So I love Jordan. I think she's a great person. It's such a great, beautiful story. We're going to end the video here. Okay, um, let me know what you guys think down below about this particular type of video. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if you could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things help me grow in the algorithm. I have memberships now. So if you want to become a member of my channel, you can do that. If you don't want to, that's fine too. I have a Discord server. I have a second channel dedicated to stream clips and other things like that. That will be linked in the description and that will be linked in the channel description. So if you click the about page on my channel, you'll find it there too. You are a beautiful specimen of human being. If you watch the video in its entirety, leave it down below by t by typing in weight loss because that is a beautiful thing, especially if you need to. If you don't need to lose weight, that's fine, but weight loss, like leave that down below because the celebration or clapping, you could put clapping too, whatever you want to do, right? Clapping, forget about weight loss, clapping, clap, C-L-A-P, not like that though, not like that, with your hands, okay? beautiful amazing this just made me feel so amazing for today i'm gonna like fucking power through the day now because i just watched this outrageous amazing person do something beneficial for themselves and i know you do something beneficial for yourself and if this isn't motivation to like push you forward and do something amazing today dude i don't know what else could be okay you're a beautiful person you're a specimen of human being you're taking care of people you're doing stuff for yourself. You're taking care of yourself as though you were taking care of somebody else. And that is beautiful. You should celebrate yourself every single day. Love yourself now. Love yourself now. You beautiful, amazing, special, amazing specimen of human being. You beautiful. Oh, you're outrageously amazing. Anyway, guys, if you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter. And like I said, Discord, second channel, all that other stuff. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.